Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It's Tuesday, December 1st. December. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. A lot going on in December. A lot of birthdays in our family. Mine is in December. Uh, my, 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 my brother, although just too many to mention. Uh, so December is going to be a busy month for, for us. And let's pray that, uh, that maybe we get a hold on this pandemic at the same time. We're in Matthew chapter 2. Um, I want to thank those of you that listened last night to my tribute to my, for my mom and my dad. I appreciated how many of you watched it and, uh, and commented. Uh, appreciate each one of you. Morning, Marcy. We're in Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to read verses, start reading in verse 19. Morning, Roz. Uh, it's, it says, After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph, in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went back to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said to the prophets, he will be a Nazarene. Now this is what I want to talk about this morning. Do you ever hear God telling you to make drastic change in your life? Mary and Joseph, I mean, just think of it. Uh, forced to go to, to Egypt uh, to, to escape from, from Herod. Morning, Rose. Morning, Parker. Uh, to escape from, from Herod, uh, going to another country with a different language, a different culture, etc., and, and live there for a long period of time, away from his family, away from their friends. Uh, God asked him to do this. Um, he was forced to stay there till Herod died. Then he was forced to move to Nazareth again with his family to escape Herod, Herod's son, again, uh, away from his family, away from, uh, from everything. Listen to what it says about, about Nazareth. You could sit there and say, well, that's no big deal. But, but listen to what it says here in, in John uh, chapter 1. I'm going to read verses uh, 40, 40, uh, 45 here. It says this. You find it here, sorry. Okay, uh, Philip and Andrew and Peter from, were from the town of Bethesda. Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. And it says, We found Jesus and Nathanael, so, and he's from Nazareth, and, and Nathanael is like, the, the Savior has come, and he's from Nazareth. Uh, Nazareth was a small, small town, uh, probably like 500 people at that time, far away from everything, very insignificant. It was like nobody of any noteworthy lived there, uh, and yet that's where God sent his son, Jesus, to, to live with his, with his mom and dad, and they were willing to do that, willing to make drastic changes in their in their life what would you do what would you do if you ever heard god calling you to make a drastic change one john what what would you do uh i can remember years ago <clears throat> when god called me away from my business i had my own business and i i, I wanted to do ministry so bad that God called me over to this church in, in Artesia, New Life Church, to be a janitor there. And uh, just so I could be around ministry, working for a low, very low salary, working for peanuts in comparison to what I was making with my own business. God called me away from my business that I had for many, many years and to, to be a janitor just so I could be around ministry. And, and, then, and, and then I got a chance to do youth ministry, and then he called me away from youth ministry to go back with my work with my son to start PHR, traveling for 
years uh, to other states. And then he called me away from that. He called me again to make another drastic change in my life, to leave that biz lucrative business to where I was making a really good living. It called me away from that uh, again to, to go to work for nothing. For one year, I worked for the Kingdom Causes with uh, Brad Fieldhouse for a year. Uh, that's where they, they do all kinds of social work in the community. And, uh, and then I was attending a church called Revolution, and the pastor had a meltdown and, and had to step down. And so I stepped in as a pastor there for a year, uh, again, doing it for free. And then I started Collision Church for the past 11 years. Uh, big changes in my life that God called me to, taking me away from, from lucrative businesses that I had. Uh, and, and, and I'll tell you, if, he, if God called me again to make a drastic change in my life, I would be willing to do it. I would be willing to do it. If, he, if God called me to, to move to another state, to move to another country, I would, I would do it. I would, if I felt God calling me, I would do that. Morning, Michelle. But what about any of you? What would you be willing to do? What would you be willing to do for God? Uh, listen what the apostles did. Um, it, says, it says this, Peter answered Jesus, says, We have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? They left everything. And Jesus told them, I tell you the truth. He says, uh, listen to this, Everyone who has left their houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or fields, their, their business, their, their, their work, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much. It's kind of like, if you left everything, I will, I will, re I will repay you. I will repay you. You, you will receive a hundred. Boy, is that true in my life? Is that true? Every decision that God called me to make, every big decision he called me to make at the time, it seemed like, like, whoa. I mean, I, I, when I took that janitor job, I was making one-fourth or less of what I was making before. When I took the job at, 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 uh, uh, at, at, at uh, youth pastor, again, uh, I think I started out like at twenty-two or twenty-four thousand dollars a year uh, that I was making with with no with no benefits, uh, to to just to just because God called me, I was willing to make those decisions. Um, what are you willing to do if God were to call you? Would you be willing to leave everything to to follow Jesus? Uh, and this even includes uh, material possessions. What if God were to call you now to, to give up some of your material possessions, so, some of your, even some of your, of your money? Uh, listen to this. Maybe this will convict some of you. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who is richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment, Command them, now listen, doesn't mean ask them, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. C command those that are rich to be generous with their money, to be generous with it, and that way they lay up treasures in heaven. God may be calling you to, he did that with me. He, 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 now everything I told you about, he also called me. He also says, what are you doing with all that savings? What are you doing with it? What, are you going to die with it, Jim? Start sharing it. And so that's what I started doing. I gave away my, I gave away the vast majority of my, of my, uh, of my savings. And I don't regret it for a, for a minute. I know, I know God has made this promise. I know that I have stored up treasures in heaven and, and, and this, God says, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. And that's something that you have to experience. You have to experience that. You, you, have, you have to give something to realize how blessed it is. It's more, it's more fun to give than it is to receive. It, it, does, it, it seems like an oxymoron until you do it, until you actually do it. 
And then he even tells us this in, in 1 John. You've heard me share this verse many times. If anyone has material possessions and sees their brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in them? If you see people with, with needs, God expects you to, re to, to reach out and help to take care of those needs. He expects that from us. And if you don't have money, you have time, you have talents. He expects us to use whatever he has given us to help others. And some of us, he asks to make major changes in our life, drastic changes in our lives. Just like he, Jesus made a drastic change in his life, his parents made drastic changes, the apostles, they were all willing to make drastic changes in their lives when God called them. I pray that each of you will be willing to make drastic changes in your life should God call you and ask you. I hope you heard him this morning. I hope you heard him loud and clear. I don't know what he might ask you to do, but trust me, he'll ask you to do, especially if you open up and ask him, God, what can I do to help you to build your kingdom? Trust me, he will He will start letting you know what to do. So it isn't all about money. It's all of, sometimes it's about time. Sometimes it's about talents. Uh, sometimes it's about making major changes in your life. Be willing to do it. God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, uh, tonight is our child, our youth message with impact. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. I thank each of you that stay loyal to these devotions. Thank you so much. God bless you all.